Curettage is the use of a curette to remove tissue by scraping or scooping. A curette is a surgical instrument designed for scraping or debriding biological tissue or debris in a biopsy, excision, or cleaning procedure. In form, the curette is a small hand tool, often similar in shape to a stylus, at the tip of the curette is a small scoop, hook, or gouge. Dilation and curatage of cervical stump The physician performs a dilation and curatage of the cervical stump. The physician inserts a speculum into the vagina to view the cervix. The physician enlarges the cervix using a dilator and scrapes tissue from the lining of the cervical stump, which is the part of the cervix left after removal of the uterus. Curatage or cautery of anal fissure, including dilation of anal sphincter, initial, subsequent. The physician exposes the perianal area and identifies the fissure. The fissure is debrided with curatage or cautery. The anal sphincter is manually dilated. Endocervical curatage, not done as part of a dilation and curatage. The physician inserts a speculum into the vagina to view the cervix. A small curette is used to scrape tissue from the endocervix, which is the region of the opening of the cervix into the uterine cavity. Dilation and curatage, diagnostic and slash or therapeutic, non-obstetrical. The physician inserts a speculum into the vagina to view the cervix. A tool is used to grasp the cervix and pull it down. A dilator is inserted into the endocervix and through the cervical canal to enlarge the opening. The physician places a curette in the endocervical canal and passes it into the uterus. The endometrial lining of the uterus is scraped on all sides for diagnostic or therapeutic purposes. Closure of gastrostomy, surgical. The physician closes a gastrostomy no longer needed. The physician enters through previous gastrostomy. The stomach is dissected free of the abdominal wall. The stomach gastrostomy site is closed with sutures. The abdominal incision is closed with layered sutures. Closure of cystostomy The physician closes an artificial opening into the bladder. Cystostomy. To access the cystostomy, the physician uses the original incision creating the cystostomy or makes an incision in the skin of the lower abdomen. After removing the sutures securing the cystostomy tube to the skin and bladder, the physician removes the cystostomy tube and sutures the bladder musculature to repair the opening. The physician places a drain tube, bringing it out through a separate stab incision in the skin and performs a layered closure of the abdominal cystostomy incision. Closure of median sternotomy separation with or without debridement. The physician performs surgery on the sternum bone to put the bone back together following previous surgical separation. With the patient under anesthesia, the physician makes an incision overlying the sternum. The incision is carried deep to the bone and the separated pieces are identified. The physician may debride soft tissue or bone. The bony fragments are manipulated back together and held in place. The physician uses wire or other internal fixation devices to maintain the bone in appropriate position. The wound is irrigated and closed in layers. Closure of aortic left ventricular tunnel. The physician closes a previously formed aortic left ventricular tunnel. The physician performs a midline sternotomy, incising the skin, fascia, muscles, and sternum. The pericardium is incised and lines are placed for cardiopulmonary bypass. When bypass is established, 
the tunnel is isolated and ligated. The cardiac incision is closed. The pericardium is repaired loosely, leaving gaps for blood and fluid to drain into the pleural space. The sternum is reanastomosed with sternal wires and the skin is sutured in layers. Closure of chest wall following open flap drainage for empyema, Claget type procedure. The physician treats a draining empyema, accumulation of pus in the chest cavity, by resecting a rib, irrigating the empyema space with an antibiotic solution intermittently over an extended period of time, and closing of the empyema space in 6 to 8 weeks. Direct or patch closure sinus venosus, with or without anomalous pulmonary venous drainage. Cardiopulmonary bypass is required. The operation is performed exactly as for a regular arterial septal defect. Apical aortic conduit Apico aortic conduit, AAC, also known as aortic valve bypass, AVB is a cardiothoracic surgical procedure that alleviates symptoms caused by blood flow obstruction from the left ventricle of the heart. Apical Aortic Conduit Construction of Apical Aortic Conduit Cardiopulmonary bypass is required. A hole is made in the tip of the left ventricle and another is made in the aorta above the coronary arteries. The conduit is oriented so that the valve in it will only let blood flow out of the heart, but not back in. One end of the conduit is sewn to the hole in the tip of the heart. The other end is sewn to the hole in the aorta. Air is removed from the heart and from the conduit. Cardiopulmonary bypass is discontinued when heart function returns. Construction of tracheoesophageal fistula and subsequent insertion of an laryngeal speech prosthesis, e.g., voice button, Blomsinger prosthesis. The physician constructs a tracheoesophageal fistula for vocalization. The physician makes a horizontal neck incision and dissects the tissues between the tracheostoma and the esophagus. The esophagus is incised and a laryngeal speech prosthesis is inserted between the esophagus and the trachea, creating a fistula. The prosthesis, called a voice button or a Blomsinger prosthesis, is a one-way valve enabling the patient to phonate. The physician closes the incision around the prosthesis. Construction of artificial vagina, without graft. With graft. For construction of an artificial vagina without graft, the physician develops a vagina by a program of perineal pressure using progressively longer and wider firm obturators. Pressure is applied to the soft area between the urethra and rectum with an obturator. Over several months of consistent, daily use by the patient, a sexually functional vagina can be created. The physician creates or enlarges the vagina using one or more skin grafts. Through a midline episiotomy incision, the physician creates a space between the urethra and rectum. Using split thickness or full thickness skin grafts, the space is lined and the vagina created. An obturator or mold is inserted into the vagina and a catheter is passed into the bladder and left for several days. The full thickness skin donor sites are closed using plastic surgical techniques. The split thickness sites are dressed with medicated gauze.